everybody. Hi, again, I'm Eileen Violini. Um, if you can find me um, online at underscore I Violini. And today we're going to talk about um, upgrading your WordPress workflow. And if you're, can I see a show of hands? How many here are designers? Good, a lot of designers. How about um, developers? So people actually work and um, how many of you use a local development environment currently? Okay, so um, a lot of what I'm going to introduce to you today is a basic local uh, WordPress development environment uh, moving through staging and then on to production. Um, there are lots of different ways that you can do this. This is uh, like a, a bare minimum way that you can um, start and begin to work with this type of workflow in your um, development processes. Uh, there are other more geeky options um, and I like to think of it as a gateway drug so once you start here um, you're, you're going to want to explore other options um, with command line and, and different tools. So. Um, When we talk about cowboy coding, that's when somebody is, who knows what cowboy coding is? Ken. Done it. Yeah. I think all of us have done a little bit of cowboy coding. So cowboy, yeah. So when, <laughs> when um, cowboy coding is when you are not using a, word, uh, a workflow for, um, for development that is going to protect your production site from going down. So. Um, you might be um, out on the South 40. Um, you know you're on the South 40, and please raise your hands here if you have done this. If you make changes to the style.css file in FileZilla and push that directly to production without using a code editor, yeah, you might be on the South 40. Go ahead, raise your hand. Um, if, you're, if you open the index.php file on production in the WordPress dashboard editor, and yeah, there's a, a typo there because I did that last minute, um, and you make changes and hit update, so you're making, yeah. You, you, might, you, might, uh, you might be cowboy coding. And um, if you think on cue is a type of fancy barbecue, and you make changes to CSS in the customizer, both hands here. <laughs> I do this every day, and he yells at me for it. So um, yeah, you might be on the South 40. Um, it, getting off of the farm is, and upgrading your WordPress workflow is going to save you time, so you can be making changes locally and uploading a whole bunch of files. How many of you have been working in FileZilla, and you hit that upload button, and it's uploading everything, and you just, it, it's like the old days of the Mac when you could walk out smoke a cigarette, have a cup of coffee, come back in, and your computer was still booting up. That's kind of like what uploading your WordPress site through FileZilla is like. Um, getting everything set up and working locally, you'll be able to cut that time down. It'll, it goes faster. You can keep track of your changes better and roll those changes back if you need to redo something. A client has decided that they don't like it. Um, and you're safe. You're ensuring that your production site is stable and you're not pushing things up there that are going to break it. So for terminology, when I talk about a local environment, it's a server that exists on your computer and it's not anywhere that anybody else can see it. It's, it's hosted right here on your own laptop or desktop. The staging environment is hosted on a remote server somewhere. Um, so wherever your host is, and it doesn't have a publicly known URL. So if, if you're, uh, it might say staging, or it might have a bunch of numbers in it, or you can throw any type of, of jargon in there to kind of um, dissuade people from being able to look at it unless they actually have the URL that you give them. And the remote environment, also called production or, li or live, um, it's the site that's seen by the, the public. It's your final site, all your final code, settings, everything. That's what everybody goes to visit. So the big picture is 
developing locally on your on the the server that you set up on your laptop or desktop pushing to staging and testing so that you can see what is happening to your code in the in the server environment that it's going to be living in because there there are changes there are things that don't always work the same way and then finally moving that staging into production tools to get started with this you need a local development server with a WordPress install there are lots of different applications that you can use to get set up with this local by flywheel is one desktop server is one um, MAMP for uh, Mac or WAMP for Windows are other options um, geeky options include docker VVV Orlando and Calibox those are not for the faint of heart um, I when as I, when I came into WordPress, I was a print designer and slowly began to learn more about code. And the very first WordCamp that I ever went to, I attended a contributor day and there were two options. You could go to training and help the training team, or you could go to testing and help the testing team. And I thought, well, I already do a lot of writing. I think I'd like to try something different. And testing appealed to me because, hey, I can break anything better than anybody. So I figured, let me do that. I spent my entire day trying to download um, things like Homebrew and, and set up things through the command line and terminal and set up VVV. And this is many years ago. There's a better system for that now. So please don't be scared. Go to Contributor Day if you can. <laughs> but at that time, it was very, very painful. And it took me a really long time to get up to speed with these things. Um, I, I kind of look at it as a rite of passage in the, um, to be able to get all of these environments set up and, and working correctly. And it's still something that I don't know how to do very well, and I always have to ask a lot of questions. So if you start down the road of using this type of workflow and you get stuck, don't give up. Just keep asking questions. Um, some other helpful things. In this process, you're going to need some migration and duplication tools. So um, DB Migrate Pro is, um, is a, it's a paid plugin that will uh, migrate your database files. Um, and Duplicator or WP um, Clone, or, or um, we also use Updraft Plus to be able to take an uh, entire snapshot or backup or clone of your site. And version control, Git, um, specifically using GUI tools like um, Git Desktop or SourceTree, and then a repository to put those files. So all of the code files that exist in not the, the WordPress core, but your theme files, your plugin files, everything that's in you know WP content and admin, all of those things would reside in, in your code repository and a hosting environment that works with Git. So, um, oh, sorry, that's the staging. Um, so using command line interface and using some sort of configuration tool can also help you get those items from local and staging into production correctly. Um, so for your local environment, it's just like any other WordPress environment. Um, it's a standard WordPress website configured with a PHP version, a MySQL database, and a clean WordPress install. It allows you to work offline so you're not connected to the server if you travel a lot or you don't have access to the internet at that time. Having, your, um, having a project that you're working on on your desktop can be really helpful so that you're, you don't have to wait to get online to, to make changes. You can see the changes quickly and immediately. You're not waiting for that time to uh, download that file from through FileZilla from your server, make changes, re-upload it. Um, you hit refresh and, and you can see what, what CSS changes you've made. Or um, In some of the tools, they will allow you to create a blueprint. So if you have specific <coughs> 
things that you work with on a regular basis, you can tell it to spin up this site using the same thing, the same items and plugins and options that you already um, use in other sites. And I like local because we can put a, an old version of WordPress up and test and see if, um, so when a client comes to me and says, my site broke and I don't know how, and I updated recently, then I can go back to a version or two versions before to see what it looks like in an older environment. Your um, local site will have a different type of URL than your main website. Uh, local by flywheel appends .local at the end of those files. And um, uh, MAMP uses uh, localhost forward slash site name. Um, your staging site then will have staging or development or QA or whatever subdomain you put in front of your site name. So um, setting up when you're um, when you're setting up um, your after you set up your local site and you make changes and you have everything maybe partially ready to go or maybe you're taking you just need to check one feature and you um, or maybe you wait till the very end and you just put the whole site up you're gonna have to move it from local to staging um, <clears throat> and the you'll want to make sure that you set after you have your local environment set up that you're setting up a staging site and you're doing the same the same routine so it's a brand new WordPress install it has the it should have similar PHP versions it has should have a database to make it easier on yourself you want to make sure that you name the database um, it has the same kind of table prefix in front of it uh, you can fix it later on if it doesn't you can change that but it just makes it easier starting out if your database tables have the same prefix name um, you'll also want to change in the config file to turn on WP debug so that you can catch any errors that are happening. So um, define WP um, debug true. That's uh, just a little helpful tip. And you have two options to move between local um, up to staging. You can do it the old fashioned way using FTP and this is a shot of the um, FTP and maybe you're just pulling over um, so this is your your local and all your local files here the individual files that you're working on this is pushing out um, to the the site that's on the server and maybe you only have one file that you made changes in in this page template file and you want to push those up and you can move it over to the corresponding file um, doing this it has creates a lot of agita for me on a regular basis because I never know if I'm getting the right file if I'm getting it into the right folder where it needs to go and it does break sometimes I like to have everything set up so that I don't have to do that heavy thinking because I'm thinking about other things at, um, and I don't want to hear a fire moment where everything goes down so taking a little bit of time in the very beginning of your process to set up a sync with Git is going to save you time later on where you're not worrying about did I just move the right file over. So um, setting, this is not a talk to like walk through how to, how to set up a local environment um, but if you're, if you're working in MAMP you'll need to go out and get the latest version of WordPress or whatever version of WordPress that you're working in and install that in your in the MAMP process. Um, if you're working in, in a product like Local, Local will give you options that you can select and you just click through some buttons so it makes it really easy. Um, and then when you're setting things up for your staging site, 
you'll want to use a tool maybe in the cPanel like Softaculous so, um, or other hosts like Pantheon or WP Engine will walk you through a wizard to be able to set up that those um, environments for you. But the idea is that once you have something in local, then you're mirroring it out on, on staging. And when we say we're going to hook it up to Git, um, what that enables us to do is that brings version control in. So how many of you have had a client, I've, I've I had this happen to me. You make changes in the menu, they, they get a whole new menu, all different kinds of drop down, lots of JavaScript actions happening, and they're like, oh, I don't know if I like that or not. I think I really want to go with that other version. And you put that other version up there, and you don't save the code, and the next thing you know, they're like, oh, I like that old version. And then you got to go back and redo everything. So that's a lot of time wasted. Version control will allow you to branch, uh, create a branch and, and, and save those thing, uh, save those snippets and, and versions of different aspects of your website so you don't, have, you don't lose that work that you've done. Um, what is Git? Git is a free and open source distributed version control system. Um, this is the, the main Git um, link, and there's a, an online web book here, so if you're really interested in finding out more about Git, this is the place to start. Um, this talk is not about Git, it's a very high level um, introduction to it. Um, Git itself also, besides being uh, version control, there's a place where your code is stored. So it's stored in the Git repo, and that's a remote storage bucket that you have access to, and you can use it um, to share your code with other team members so you can collaborate together. It's important to note that Git itself is the version control, and other products like GitHub or um, Bitbucket, uh, there's some others out there as well. Those are um, specific types of remote access to, so Git is the version control, and then Bitbucket or GitHub are different products that use Git version control. They use other types of version control, but that's where you can use Git. And you can use, um, those, that version control through the command line or through a GUI interface, so like Git Desktop or Source Tree, and it provides you a way to be able to see um, what branch you're working in and what changes you have made. If you can note here, there are, um, there's some red fields in the back here and some green fields. The green field indicates that there's been a line changed in, the, in this code. Something has changed here. This is the old version, and this is what is being pushed out new. Um, so your Git account, you'll want to have a, you'll create a Git account there, you'll create a repo there, and then you'll push what code you have locally to that repo in, in Git. So whether you're using GitHub or Bitbucket, you'll, you'll push the code out there. The big difference between um, GitHub and Bitbucket are pr um, private accounts. So Bitbucket will allow you to have a, a free private account. You can get private accounts at GitHub, but you have to pay for it first. I think Git, uh, Bitbucket, um, it, it like t stops you at like yeah, three, private three private repos. Um, but it's the same sort of process that you're, you're working through um, in terms of you have some, you're making changes to your code locally and then you're putting it out into the repo. And then once you are, um, if, you, if your host allows this, if they're set up to do this, so like SiteGround, your very base level um, is just regular hosting and you have to move up a tier or two to get the the Git sync or the um, geeky options, they call it. But um, you install an SSH key in your repo. You create an SSH, 
a, an SSH key pair in your repo and you sync and you use one key in your Git account and one key on your, your server. And when you push changes out to get the, your Git remote bucket, it will, um, you'll see those changes happen automatically on your website. So you've just eliminated that whole step of going in and moving one file from, through FileZilla from one place to another. I'm not gonna lie, this is hard for me to do. It, it takes a little bit of, there's a little learning curve. You would, it, it would be to, to both. So initially you want to make sure that you're going into staging and you're getting everything in staging first and then staging would roll over to production. Usually you wouldn't want to push changes directly into production. Um, it's more from just taking that staging site and then making changes to that so that it becomes your production site. And the last step is the database. So dotting your I's, once, when you're in, um, when you're in, when you're local and you push those changes out to, um, to staging, whatever's in local stays in the local environment. So um, think about it in terms of, um, if you have a database, on your production site and your client is making changes to it. They're putting in new pictures, they're putting up new blog posts. If you took everything that you had locally and you just push it out into production, you would overwrite everything that they have done in the past, whatever it is, since you've taken a snapshot of that site. I've had that happen um, to a, a, some, a place that I was working. So that all that, all those files and every, you know, all that work and everything is just gone. Um, using a tool like DB Migrate Pro, you can um, sync the database. You can either pull what production and pull it down locally, or you can um, push the files, the database files, so posts or images, media files, and push those out. But that's really a, a separate. Um, you want to think of that in terms of being a very separate, deliberate step so that you're not overwriting something somewhere where you don't want to do it. And again, what happens locally stays locally. So um, you're, you're in there, you're creating a theme, you're making all your theme changes to CSS, and you're pushing those posts into your repo. It's being version controlled. It's being saved in a place other than on your desktop, and then that sync is happening between those code files in the repo and the code files that are being stored on your server to be displayed on the front end. But all along that process, no database files are getting crossed. It's just the code files. Um, what happened to my plugins? <laughs> so. This is something um, that I always get tripped up on. I make a push and I go to check something and the change isn't there. And I don't know why it's not there. And I'm like, I know I did this right. And the first thing I do is think that I've done something wrong in the code. I go and I look in the code. Well, 45 minutes later, I go into the WordPress admin dashboard and it says this plugin has been disabled mm -hmm. or you go into the settings and the settings aren't, aren't correct. And that's because those, those settings in your plugins aren't getting transferred over. So um, I actually have a sticky note someplace that you know reminds me to go check those things first so I don't waste 45 minutes. Um, and that's a real pain point, I think. And it's a pain point for most people because what you're left <laughs> Is what you're left doing is when you have a plugin with all of its settings, and if you have a, a lot of plugins, I work in, uh, I do a lot of work in, in Paid Memberships Pro, um, and there are a ton of add-ons to that one main plugin and a lots and lots of settings. So um, that's really tough to be able to keep up with all those changes and things that I've made. Um, you can use a configuration management tool. This is a, a new area that I'm exploring in terms of um, trying to eliminate 
areas in my workflow and my process that are, are create a lot of friction for me. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I haven't gotten there yet. I can't share with you if any, you know, how that works. Um, a friend of mine, Tessa uh, Kreisel from Pantheon, um, she has a, a, a talk, I have it in my resources here on configuration management. Um, so that'll be the, the next area that I'll be exploring. But like I said, it's a gateway drug. Once you start doing this, you're, you're going to be looking at doing more and getting better, or at least that's what I'm doing. Um, some of the resources I have for you, um, I have a couple things here on, on how to use Git. Um, like I said, this wasn't a talk about Git. It was just you know the broad concept of it. The, there are oodles and reams of pages and posts and, and information on the internet about Git and Git branching and how you should use Git version control. And um, that's not what, you know, that could be an all day long conference, but this was more just the very high level um, type of thing. For my studio, what we'll usually do is look at um, having a feature. So different branches, we, we each will have our own branch that we'll work in, but we will also version out branches. So we might have a branch that's the menu upgrade or a branch that's the um, adding in the CSS upgrade. So things like that. And then once, those, once we've tested those branches and they look good, then we merge them into the master branch. But there's lots of different ways and lots of different thought processes about how you should branch um, Git. So the, and there's um, learn Git branching, um, Git for WordPress development, WP Pusher. Um, this is a, a tool similar to um, the configuration management tool, um, and it will allow you to keep up the settings synced. Um, it's something that I haven't tried yet, but the WordPress Git course that he has online, you sign up for it and he sends you a different video every day. That's a really great introduction. Um, there's the configuration um, talk and this is uh, the code, what's available in the codex for um, starting and se setting up a local development environment. So do we have any questions? Yes. So if a hosting company doesn't have a specific staging area where you can just click a button and switch it, can you do you know, set up a subdomain or something? Yes. And, and then that will work the same? You yes. Have to manually copy over? Right. So, um, and you'll want to check that you have enough space in your account and, and um, bandwidth to be able to do that, but that's exactly what you would do. So something like staging or QA as a subdomain off of your, your main URL, that, that works. Yeah, Ken. Um, I don't know how you would handle this, but if you have images on your production site, on, does your staging site have a duplicate of those images, or are you referring to the production site images? So you don't have duplicates of staging space. Um, I'm probably, I think in my workflow at the moment, I'm probably duplicating, and I so should, I, yeah, think I about, <laughs> yeah, I should really think about doing that differently. Um, but yeah, that's probably how okay. it, how it works at the moment. Okay. Yeah. With staging, um, I'm getting dinged occasionally with uh, duplicate content errors because the same content will live in a staging environment and it's in a production environment. Although mm -hmm. it's temporary in staging, that is a short-term hit on SEO for me because that same content is in two different URLs. I don't know if you have any workflow or any trick to get around making a site overall with one quick fix to say this is not a searchable site. Robot in yeah, in your settings, in the general settings, um, yeah. under. What I'm doing is protecting it behind the HT axis, yes. so there is a password of none of that content is That's what I've been doing, because I've been finding that the setting isn't always. Doesn't, they yeah. They yeah. don't have to observe. Yeah, they don't have to, right. But HD access would be the other answer, you know, just okay. deny. Mm -hmm. cool. yeah. But the answer to Ken's is you can mm -hmm. use the same database. Mm -hmm. And then just change the uh, two op options. If it's a new database, like option one and option two are the URLs. If it's an old database, it's one and 36. Just so, so the staging URL you're changing, and then everything else would be production URLs. 
and then you can leave all your oh, things there. Okay. Right, I, I seem to recall reading an article on it, and of course now I can't find it, and I think it's by the people who made uh, TV Migrate Pro. But I thought they had something, and I just can't find it. So if you, if you do that, do it in the database first. Just make those two changes. Otherwise, your staging site wouldn't resolve. Right. Um, okay. But then, yeah. But then that way the references, everything the images are going to production, and I don't have duplicate, which then saves right. space. Right. Okay. Yes. All right. Thanks. Well, what happens if you if you need to pull something up in staging? Is it going to? No. No. So, no. Don't do that. Do it No, so if you pro so in this case, uh, you could you could test something locally. I mean, in staging, right. and it would use those the, the staging URL, and anything that you added to it media wise would have the staging URL. But you wouldn't take that database and put it up. You never you, you never put the database that way. You only take the database down. You only take the database down, never up, unless you're a new site. So, and if you're... How do you, when you update your current ones? On your live site? But those are, that, that's, that's files. So those are, you're going to have to do that in both places, no matter what. He's just talking about the database. And, and it's really just references to images. That's what the, the issue is. So you're doing it in both places. That's what you're saying. Updating plugins in both places. Right. Okay. Jason. The question was more about saving space. Right. Okay. Right, right. With images, yes. Just gonna ask if um, you can probably work with clients with a lot of different hosts. If there's hosts that you feel do their staging site better than others. So. Like, indiv individual features of how they do staging that you like and dislike. Um, recently, I had the opportunity to uh, put a client out in Pantheon, and I really liked how quick and easy that was to be able to um, install their migrator plugin on my client's live site, hit that migrate button, it generates a machine key and you, you throw that into the plugin and you have to keep the, the browser open. But you hit that migrate key and it just goes and it just does it and I don't have to do all of these different steps and stages. So that was a really big time saver for me and I'm gonna look at how I can replicate that type of thing in my, in my own workflow. Um, it's, uh, yeah, that is open source. So um, Updraft uh, Plus has a migrate uh, button like that, and it'll work between live site to live site, but it doesn't work from if I have to take my client site and pull it down locally. So what I'll have to do is I, I um, create a, a package. It, cre it, it breaks it up into uh, theme files, uh, plugin files, uh, uploads, different, it gives you four different packages, and then you download those, install Updrafts Plus locally, and it will, you hit the restore button, and it goes and it grabs each of those packages. It makes the process a little bit easier for really, really big sites, because it's chunked everything up for you, but um, it's still time consuming. I want that just that click the <laughs> button um, magic thing. Um, local by Flywheel and the, um, their local environment and their, their hosting is a really, really nice tight integration. There's a button in there you hit connect and it goes out and it sends all the files to, to your site there on that host. Um, but, and WP Engine, I've worked with WP Engine and that's also been very smooth. So any other questions? Does anybody else have a different workflow that they use? <laughs> Because in my, my, my dev environment, I have like contact forms, for example, that go to me, not to my client. But on the live site, they go to the client. So I'm not, I'm, but let's say I'm updating all the plugins, I'm testing it, make sure everything works. 
the thing that's nice about a dev environment is exactly the same PHP version and database versions and server hosting. Everything's matched up exactly, you know. So then, but then I'm repeating my steps. I'm going through and updating the plugins on the live site. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm able to do any kind of testing or try some new things. Um, I don't have all the most recent content on the staging site because I'm not. I'm not even pulling it down because there's no purpose to that unless there's been like some major changes. You know, that might be right. Um, but it's also you know space. Space, you know, if you have a space issue, that would be a problem. Yes. So there is some downsides to it, but I don't know. I, I was trying to figure out, is there a way to have a third level in there so that I can just push things to the live site? But it sounds like you're actually doing some stuff. You are actually doing it twice anyway. So. That, and I do a lot of plug-in work, so that's a really big issue for me at the moment, mm -hmm. is trying to f find a way to that, that goes easily because I don't like to install and set up plugins on a client's live production site and usually none of them have staging or QA or anything like that. So I made me think of like a when we, we have a commercial plugin now, so we definitely have like a version number and a change log of things that we're doing. But I know when I used to do consulting we would overlook that. So you created a plugin for someone, you're like it's one point and you want to create a change log. But I found like later on in consulting, I realized like, oh, I should do a change log even for like client plugins and keep track of the version because eventually what happens is you have that same plugin like on dev, on staging, on their staging and this local machine, this other one, and you, you're like, oh, I don't know which is which. Oh, yeah. And so like if you're not doing some other kind of version control to map these things, like it's good to keep track of versions and change logs for things. Right. Um, I have some, we do something similar. So we, if we do a customizations plugin, or um, something special in a paid memberships pro register helper um, plug-in will version control those so and show the number um, because inevitably if I've got one um, my partner has another one so that way we can at least be able to say which number do you have yes just a comment on plugins so uh, you were talking about how you have changes on your local and it doesn't get pushed to production I had the opposite problem because the plugin was really just a portal to a cloud service. So I was local, I thought everything was fine, things were actually happening on live. So on live, yeah. Something to, to think, yeah. Can we talk about, was that the social That was the social thing? web. Yeah, thing, and yeah. that is something that they're trying to cut now because Facebook and a lot of the social medias are not allowing a massive post from somewhere else, so right? That may not be an issue anymore, but yes, we definitely experienced that. Right? Yeah, they're cutting out being able to post, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. from your website. So, all right, great. Any any other questions? No. Do you have a link to your resources uh, on Twitter or? Uh, yes, I will tweet out that link. Um, mm -hmm. And if you go to visit it, um, it is. Um, Right now it's on a site, uh, a test site, and I'm using a new theme and development environment workflow from uh, Morton um, Henriksen. It's called WP Rig. So um, the site is basic, 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 and I'll be making changes and updates to that, um, that theme. Um, it uses other things like Composer and, and um, uh, Browser Sync. So, um, that's the next stage of my journey about um, creating a better development environment. So you can keep checking back and see how it turns out. Also, the URL? Um, it is iviolini.sidetrack.studio. Also, all slides are getting collected by Kim, and we'll be getting all the links to them, and it'll be added to their speaker notes there on the WordPress site today. Uh, I don't have mine printed. <laughs> Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.